All right, here we go. Dion Cole, welcome back. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes. Welcome back. It's been a minute. Been a minute. One of my favorite guests, man. All right, thank you, man. Thank you. And you know, you know what I love also is that when I haven't talked to someone in a while and I bring them back and they level up mm. during that time. Mm. You know what I mean? Since yes, that sir. time that we haven't talked, yeah. like I see all this, all this new stuff, uh, you know, these new uh, business deals, yes, these new yes. big looks, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what you have done since last time. Thank you so much, sir. Well, Appreciate first, it. First and foremost, you're the new global ambassador, global, <laughs> the whole world, <laughs> ambassador of Old Spice. Yeah, that's crazy, right? God damn. I know, right? <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. I'll be honest. <laughs> Did you see that one coming? No, 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 <laughs> not at all, not at all. But it made sense. It made yeah. sense, but I didn't see it coming. But it, but it, but it made sense. Like once, once it came at me, it was, it was, it was odd. I remember, like, like my, maybe about a year and a half ago, I was like with this girl. We was just sitting there watching, I was watching something on TV or something, and she was like, and the Old Spice commercial came on, and she's like, "This, you'll kill that shit." And I was like, she, no, she said, she said, you should do an Old Spice commercial. And I said, I'll kill that shit. I, I just, in my mind, I was like, yo, I would love to do one of them. Like, I would kill that shit. You know, mm-hmm. just me personally, because I like that kind of comedy and shit, you know. And then a year and a half later, like, yo. So did they reach out? You reached out? What happened? So they reached out to my ag- my agency. And they were talking about, they were looking at, like, three, four guys for this. And so they uh, called me. We had a, a conversation on the phone. And right after that, man, I say about a couple of days later after that, my manager called me and was like, yo, uh, you, you the Old Spice guy. And I was like. You didn't have to audition or, or anything? No, 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 no. Because I, like I said, they had like three guys in mind. And so they was like talking to all three of us. And so once they talked to me, when we got, when I got on the phone with them, I think, I think the turning point was it was all of them on this phone and I was on the phone and I couldn't hear everybody. And I said something like, this is the worst three way ever. And they was just like, huh? <laughs> I was like, I can't hear none of y'all. Like, this is the worst three way I've ever had in my life. And right after that, they just was laughing. You're right. And then, yeah, basically they, they, man, they called back and was like, yo, but also because, you know, Old Spice is like a really quirky, like quirky, like brand or whatever. Mm-hmm. So between all the stuff that I did on Conan, all the quirky shit that I did on Conan, and the, the character I play on Blackish, which is quirky as hell, and on Grownish, and the character I played on Angie Tribeca, which was, you know, um, you know, like if you don't know about Angie Tribeca, it's like airplane or le- like uh, like Naked Gun, like that kind of comedy. So for me to be playing that kind of quirky character on all these different platforms, I guess they were like, it just don't get no you know, quirkier than this dude or whatever. So them bringing me in, um, it made sense at that time, you know? And so we just we just rocked the road after that. Next thing I know, I say, as soon as they told me, five days later, I was on a plane to Portugal. To film the commercials? Commercials, yeah. Okay, and when you say global, that means that these commercials are being played in other countries as well? Yeah, it's around the world, and they, and they and they dubbed in different languages. Like they'll be dubbed in Russia, um, you know, uh, uh, um, Portugal, uh, Japanese, like Spanish. Spanish, everything. Yeah, they wow. Yeah, they be dubbed all over the yeah. So it's global campaign. It's crazy. Is this the biggest check you've ever gotten in your career? It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it ain't like it's it's not like it's like 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 crazy crazy, but it's like wow, like, like endorsements. It's like like you hear about that until you do it and you go, oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, what? Y- yes, yes, I agree. This is I agree. I agree with everyone doing this. <laughs> And, uh, you know, like, I don't really know the commercial uh, world very well, but 
do you get paid every time the commercial runs in different just period all around the world mm-hmm. or is it just kind of like a lump sum and then yeah it's like a it's like a it's like a lump sum for a period of time and then after that period of time after certain uh uh things that I do with the with the brand or whatever then after that obligation is done then whatever else they need me for then they'll like just pay me for it well, man, congrats. Yeah, it's crazy. Congrats. It's crazy. And, and like, honestly, I, like. I just sit back and stay out of everybody's way. <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> and honestly, when I saw it, I'm like, oh, this is a, this is a good fit. It wasn't like, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know. I got it. It got to grow on me a little yeah. bit. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I got it. Yo, I got and, it. And, and, and what was so crazy, everyone felt like that. Everyone felt yeah. like, yo, we get it. Like, like I did. Like, I was like, Oh yeah, yeah this yeah like yeah this works yeah so it was it was great man and it's been great man shout out to Old Spice man well uh, Kevin Hart did a cameo in one of the commercials yeah yeah cold as balls yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but his 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 web series cold as balls we did a promotion for it collabed with Old Spice and and me yeah we we knocked out something real dope. Yeah, that that was dope, man. Yeah, I guess yeah. <laughs> I guess you blame them for stealing your idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's so dope, though. Kevin's dope. Uh, before you was Terry Crews. Mm-hmm. Was he the first like Old Spice guy? No, it was Isaiah uh, Mustafa. Mustafa was the guy who was on the horse. The guy who was like. Look at your man, now look at me. Now look back at your man. Now oh, right, me. that guy. His ah. He was the first like black Old Spice dude that I know of. And then came Terry Crews. And then me. Okay, so they've always had a black guy. That's the Old Spice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this and this and this like uh like they have like like it's a historical run of men that our brand Old Spice ambassadors, you know, it's like a, it's like a elite thing, you know, where it's like, it goes back, like Old Spice goes back, like almost like a hundred years. It, it started off as a, a, as a woman's cologne. Old Spice was a woman's cologne. It started off as like, okay, and then it, and then it transitioned over to men, and it's just been like a man's things. Okay, and, and is there a bigger corporation that owns Old Spice or? Is that what? Is there like a bigger corporation that no. owns? No, Old Spice is its own company. I, I believe so. Huh. I believe so. It's not owned by Gillette or Kraft no, 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 or no, nothing. No, no, That's no, what I mean. No, like that. No, no. Old Spice Pepsi. Or... No, 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 no. Old Spice, Old, Old Spice got buildings everywhere. Like everywhere. Like companies everywhere. Yeah, it's his own joint. Dope, man. Yeah, Dope. thanks. <laughs> when did Terry Crews actually transition out of that role? I'm not even sure. I don't know. I know Terry was with them for a long time. Wow, like, yeah. m- like maybe like eight years. He was with them for like eight years or so. Yeah. And um, I don't know when he, when he transitioned out of it. You know, in some of Terry's commercials, I think he wears like a wig, and makeup, mm-hmm. and a dress, yeah. stuff like that. Did they ever offer that type of thing for you? Nah. Like we we went cork we went like really weird and different when I flew to Portugal we shot a bunch of commercials that was, that was like really really weird and odd and stuff you know which was cool which was part of the Old Spice brand but it was never like in no dresses and nothing like that okay but it was it was funny funny stuff like on some Hercules type type joint but everyday man type stuff like I don't have no abs and I ain't like <laughs> muscled out and super sexy and all that you know it's the fact that they just wanted a man's man that was just an everyday dude this time and so that's that was that was another connection that we had that I wasn't one of those like you know, right, yeah because Mustafa was all yeah ripped, ripped yeah, off, so yeah Mustafa was like sexy you know, Revan and Terry was all cut. You know, I'm just like, I'm just, I just exist. <laughs> well, if, if Old Spice asked you to, to dress like a girl, uh-huh. would you do it? Oh, um, I don't, I don't know if that's like my brand like that. I don't think that I'm like good, a good fit for that. You know, I think we can, I think we can like talk about it. I've done it before where I put on a apron, like a like a, a maid's dress one time. 
Hmm. One time on Conan, I did that. I think that was like the only time I did that. And I was like, okay. Gotcha. I was like, yeah, I'm, I don't know if I'm ever do this again. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you and Terry have a relationship? We cool, like when we see each other. Yeah, I'd be like, what up, T? But uh, like, we ain't on the phone every day and just okay. like, yo, yo. But every time I see T, we, yeah, we, it's always love. What'd you think about the whole, you know, sexual assault thing that happened and so forth? I mean, I understand what T was doing. A lot of people been giving T slack and shit, slack and shit, like he should have beat his ass and all that. But I think, I think he was trying to like, you know, just make a point where it's like, yeah, I can beat your ass. I got all the equipment to beat your ass, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm gonna I'm play this game the way that everyone else plays this game. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you where it hurt. I'm gonna hit you in your pocket. I'm, I'm gonna come at you a different way. I'm not I'm not gonna come to you the way that you probably would want me to. You know what I mean? So I I looked at it like that. You know I'm I'm a big firm believer of his two sides to every story. So I, I I looked at it like he was like, I'm going to get them another way. Right. We also don't know what exactly happened. We don't know exactly yeah, how Because the other guy, Adam, uh, you know, Adam Bennett, I think, mm -hmm. uh, he never really spoke about it publicly. Right. So we don't know. I mean, yeah. have you ever had men come on to you yeah. in Hollywood? Yeah. They had dudes come, to me, come on to me a lot. And how do you usually handle it? Uh... First of all, I be cool. I'm like, oh man, I'm flattered, thanks. Right. You know? And then when they like get a little more aggressive with it, I just be like, my man, like, yo, you don't want to do that. Like straight up and down. Like I'm I'm, I'm like, you don't want to do that. You really don't, you, re you really don't want to do that. Well, I just interviewed Michael Jai White. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, you know, I asked what, what would happen if a man walked up to him and mm -hmm. tried to grab him. Mm -hmm. He said, I might kill him. It's a different thing. And I mean, I guess I can see everybody's perspective. Um, uh, there's a you know, there's a part of me that just kind of like, and I start putting, I can't put myself in that situation because I don't have that. I don't have, if somebody, I'm going to. Okay, so. If <laughs> I, would, it, I would kill somebody. Okay, so if a gay <laughs> man, if a gay man walked up to you and grabbed your, your genitals, uh -huh. what would you do? I think I'd probably, I'd probably hit him in the solar plexus really hard. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 I, like, it, like, if a man tried to grab me, yeah, like, I just, like, I, I know how I get down, so I just, I would seriously, I think everything, I try, to, I try to think everything out. So I would honestly think that out instead of just reacting and just whooping his ass like that. Unless he was like, because how about how about if a motherfucker like drunk as fuck and he doing trying to reach and grab or some shit like that? I like I don't I wouldn't like beat him to death for that because he drunk. I would like yeah somebody get your man like, right get your man you know and like kind of like I'm gonna try to avoid all confrontations as possible until they get like out of hand and if you sober doing that shit. Then yeah, then we, you know, then we gonna have to, you know, I might, I might have to put the foo fops on you. Yeah, I mean, and I've talked about this before in some of my interviews. I remember this one time in Israel, some, you know, gay Israeli dude walked up to me and started like biting on my shoulder, like just some weird, you know what I mean? Right. And I'm like, it catch you off guard. It catch you off guard. You like, you gotta, you gotta you don't even up. know how to really. Hey, you be yeah, like, you're like, oh, 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 you need, oh, how oh, did oh, you know oh, okay. hey. like, <laughs> What are you doing? What, what, like, what, like, what's up, know me? Like, <laughs> you know, going, I just you're... said, all right, I just turned around and walked away. I guess I didn't see, you know, and, and that's the whole thing. And, and we we talked about this a lot, you know, like me and TK Kirkland had a whole conversation about this, about how we just didn't really see how it's a huge deal. Making a big deal like this, someone like Terry is like, I right, could just push them off and call it a day. Right. But the way he turned to the first Me Too male victim was a bit weird to us no and, and don't get me wrong on some on some on some man shit it's like nigga what you doing what nigga what you doing you know like, like <laughs> on some saying. man shit on some man shit on some man shit like, you like what motherfucker like <laughs> but in this movement in today's era and shit i think he was trying to like make a point or whatever but 
Yeah. I mean, it's like, I, I get it, but. I mean, we're in the era of the victim. We're in the yo, era. We are in the era where. The victim, the victim is celebrated. Yo, the victim is celebrated all the way around the board. It's like, you'd rather be a victim than a hero. That's where we're at now. The hero is going to be the bully. The hero yeah. is the bully. He beat all those people and won that gold medal. He, yeah. Look, he hurt everyone's he feelings. He hurt everyone's feelings. <laughs> Who only got silver and Who got silver. silver. And, and he copper. mocked them by holding his medal up. What an asshole. Him. What an asshole holds what a his medal up and shows everybody <laughs> that he won gold. Like, that's where we at. Uh, that's where we at. And look at Steph Curry with that trophy. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron's never going to recover from that. <laughs> Matter of fact, this trophy for everybody else, so you won't feel bad. <laughs> Everyone gets a goddamn trophy. That's where we at now. That's where we're at. That's where we're, at. That's where we're at. And as a man, I just can't come to grips with that. I, I get it. I struggle with it. I just don't get it. I, I just don't get it. We're, we're in a very different type of age right different, now. Different, different climate right now. Yeah. It don't even, it don't, it don't feel familiar. It don't feel like there's an answer. Like I, <laughs> I have no, I don't even know how to maneuver in, in today's climate. Like, yeah. it's well, weird. Me and TK Kirkland had a conversation about this recently. And TK actually goes way back with Terry. Like way back. Like he used to say when Terry was broke, he used to help pay his rent. You know, mm -hmm. took him his wife out to dinner, took him right. on tour with him. Mm -hmm give them money every night and they had a falling out at one point and we had this whole conversation and it was, it was somewhat playful and uh the conversation you know was and and, and the level like uh, and the, the the fuss that he's making over this you know because like i remember i had godfrey on my show recently and i, I told him about uh you know when i was in jerusalem one day some gay guy tried to hit on me right he, he kind of like you know tried to bite my the shirt on my shoulder right and i'm like all right i just like nah this i'm cool i just walked away i didn't make a big deal of it i didn't even really care it's like hey it's not my thing i keep it moving but to to make the type of fuss he's making like are you secretly trying to hide something and are you being overly defensive you know, the whole point. And really, if Terry Crews is gay or bisexual, just come out the closet just come and out say it, class. man. You know, it's a it's an environment. You know, you're wearing purses and high boots now yeah, and everything yeah. else like that. Something. Like I said, you're a man. I'm a man. To all the people mm -hmm. who are, have no problem being men in today's world, because it's a hard thing being a man today. When a man that you think is a man doesn't do what men are supposed to do, this is what you allow people's minds to start thinking, regardless of I'm going to do this for to defend masculinity or whatever he's trying to defend with the boots and the purse, real motherfuckers is going to think this way. And we put it out there like that, right? And we both were like, well, we don't know. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't, right? And we put it out there, and the title was something like, TK Kirkland of Vlad wonders, you know, uh, Terry Crews is secretly gay. Then Terry responds to us and said, TK Kirkland and Vlad wonder out loud why they're tr sexually attracted to Terry Crews. <laughs> <laughs> and for the next two days, he was retweeting people who were like, Terry's not gay. And he's like retweeting the shit that has my name all in it and stuff like that. Oh, man. And my response was like, well, Terry, you're the only one that wears a, that has a purse and Mary J. Blige, no more drama boots. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> Remember that? Remember the boots and the, the purse? Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Terry, man, come through. Yeah. Let's chop it up. <laughs> come on. What did he say? He didn't, he didn't answer he that. Say that. That, that was the end of that. Yo, that's crazy. Yo. <laughs> yo, man, like I say, man, that's funny, yo. You went, you went at him with that I one. I went at him, man. Yo, I just think, like, I don't, I don't believe Terry's gay. I don't, I don't believe that. I just think... He went, he went about this a different angle than what the normal man would do. And anytime you do anything out of character is going to be judged and is going to be fucking dissed and all of that. So I, I just look at it like that, you know? And when things happen differently, it's weird to everybody at first, but then 
somebody else might do somebody else might come in the line of what terry did as as crazy as it might sound somebody might do the same thing terry did like i remember when the first time i saw a motherfucker a man with extensions right like like, like braids Fetty what? extension i think fatty i mean yeah, i was fatty like has this. Dread, dread extension and i was like this what the fuck is he doing like why would he do that like that shit look whack as fuck like why would he do that that shit was odd. That shit was odd to me as fuck, yeah, right? Still is. Still is. <laughs> but everybody got that shit now. Meaning that the first time you see something, you play that shit, you diss it. But then after it becomes normal, then everybody's cool with it. So somebody got to take the butt of that. And I think Terry's taking the butt for something that probably start happening more and more often. Well, I mean, we talk about the the you know, the age of the victim, mm-hmm. no one personifies that better than Jesse Smollett. Do you know him personally? I met him. You met him? I met him. I could imagine when I was younger, paying someone, let's just say I'm out with a date with a girl I'm trying to impress. You know, I'll pay you, you know, $100 to come harass her and then I'll beat your ass in front of her. You know, like I'll pay you to get beat up in front of me. I can do, I can see that, you know, and then I look like the hero and I go and get laid afterwards. Like, you know, I, I get that situation. Yes. Paying someone to beat me up, I just cannot just comprehend. Just to beat you up? <laughs> you can't comprehend that. Yeah. But this is the day, this is today's day, the day of the victim. you rather get that. But I have a theory on that. Gay Tupac. It, yo, that, he, now, if we gonna get him on anything... <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him on that fucking statement. That was the dumbest shit ever. I'm the gay Tupac. Cut it out. No, but I I have a theory on that shit. What's the theory? I feel I feel personally that it had nothing to do with money. It had nothing to do with none of that. Okay. I believe that first of all, I knew it was bullshit because I'm from Chicago. And when he said it was some motherfuckers in a vortex of negative 30 degrees downtown Chicago in baseball caps. <laughs> that I right knew there. Then, motherfucker, ain't nobody wearing no MAGA baseball caps in Chicago downtown by the lakefront where it's negative 30 degrees. And I have not seen no MAGA skull caps yet. So I know you bullshit about that shit. Okay. But him having the situation that he has, I believe he was covering up. I think I believe he was covering up a sexual act that he had going on. I think that he, because he had a living boyfriend and his boyfriend was gone. And I believe that he had a sexual act with some some dude where they was on some wild shit and they mm. was choking him or something. And then when he woke up that morning, he had that mark around his neck and he had to cover it up. So he paid a couple of Nigerians to go buy some rope and some red hats and some bleach. And cover it up. This is probably the best <laughs> breakdown you had that you're going to have. I'm going to play you, uh, you know. It sound crazy, <laughs> but I, I believe it. This, uh, this guy named Ace Vane, who does these parody videos, mm-hmm. did, a, did a parody of the Good Morning America interview. Mm-hmm. And this is literally, I, I probably watched this a hundred times. This is one of my favorite things to watch. As a gay Mm-mm, man, Mm-mm. that's cap. I don't want to hear it. As a black man, no nigga. Look, uh, uh-uh, we not doing this. No gay, no black. You making us look stupid, bro. I got beat up though, for real. Remember the selfie? Look at the selfie. Look, it's a scratch. They scratch me, and that scratch came from a place of hate. You don't believe my emotions right now? I, I'm a good actor. I mean, I'm not acting right now, but I mean, you don't believe my performance. You don't watch Empire? Not since season two. Wrap this shit up, bro. They had a rope around my neck. Uh, yeah, a rope around your neck, yeah. Look, what what will you believe right now? Nigga, I just want you to stop lying. Motherfuckers dying about this shit for real. You playing. Uh, I just want to be gay Tupac, man. You can't be gay Tupac. Yes, I can. Nigga, Tupac was the gay Tupac and the straight Tupac. He all the Tupacs. <laughs> That is stupid. (laughs) 
Yeah, man. I mean, motherfuckers is really out here dying I know over you, this shit. I know you. I know you think I'm tripping, but look, he had a living boyfriend. His boyfriend was gone. Okay. And so therefore, he went and had a wild night dipping off with somebody, mm-hmm. and he had a wild sexual act. And he had to cover it up. He couldn't go film with that with that marks around his neck. And he couldn't have the marks on his neck when this man came home or whatever. So he had to do something. And I know it sounds far-fetched what I'm saying, but I honestly believe that that's what he did in order to cover it up. And mind you, people will go through elaborate lies in order to cover up stuff. They definitely will. Please believe it. I've even asked women. I've been like, what would you do if if you came home, if, you, if you, your man went out of town and you came back home? And, I mean, you went and got with another man and you came back and you woke up that morning and you had a big hickey on your neck. What would you do? You know, women told me they would they would here's what they said that they would go stay with their mama for a few days and wouldn't go to work and stay with their mama until the hickey went away. Other women said they'll burn themselves with a curling iron. <laughs> One chick told me, she said, I'll go get my hair done and then burn myself with a curling iron in order to cover that up. Mm -hmm. The point I'm making is that makes sense. That makes sense to someone trying to cover up something. So I know you think, and the more elaborate it is, the the more that you believe it more because you think, why would he say and do this or whatever? But that's what it was. Those Nigerian guys, they said they never put a hand on him. Oh, and the really? police, yeah, they oh. said they never touched him. Oh, I and didn't the know that police, part. And the police said that the marks were self-inflicted. But they wasn't self-inflicted. I think. I think that they had to do hmm. some sexual act that he had. And Empire just released something on TMZ not too long ago, saying that they don't think that this attack was over money. So now we take money out of the equation. We take the beating of these guys mm-hmm. out of the equation. What else is what, left? What happened? And why would you? And what else would you do to cover up something like that? You would do that in order to keep your partner. You would do that. And the letter thing, the letter was sent like 10 days earlier, so he just played off of the letter. You get what I'm well, saying? Well, but they, they had found magazines at the Nigerian brother's house yeah, that matched up with right. the letter. So he went and got the same guys because he probably dipped off days later. You get okay. what I'm saying? This is the most sensible thing that I think could have happened. If, if that ain't it, then I don't know why he did it. I don't know why he did it. And he gonna go to jail if he lie, if he lie on the stand. He can lie all day yeah. long right now, but when he gets well, on the stand, he gonna have to. He needs to just tell people the truth, cut a couple checks. Here you go. Sorry for wasting y'all time. Sorry for wasting y'all time, and then go lay back somewhere. Yeah, but he went on Good Morning America. He got no, on stage, called himself the gay too. It get bigger than you. It get bigger than you. Okay. It well, get, it get bigger than you. I guess we'll see. Especially, see. Plus, they was trying. I think a lot of. Energy came to that story because you know they was trying to pass this law in Congress as well as far as the the lynching. I, I heard about this, and and, and uh, so by him doing this lynch thing, it brought more attention. Like, hey, see, we really need. And to they, stop. they included uh, basically gay bashing in that gay in that law and that law. That's why it took off the way that it did mm. when it wasn't supposed to. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And that's that's just me. I I could be crazy, but I know. If I'm trying to keep my woman and I got a hickey on my neck or some rope stuff around my neck, that's why when the police, when he showed up, when he showed up and the police was like he was walking with a noose around his neck. Mm-hmm. If you can, if somebody put a noose around your neck, you taking that and that's the last, that's the first thing you take oh, yeah. off. Because if they had it so tight on you, you want to get that thing off. Yo, as soon as they run off, you're taking the damn you're noose off. taking the noose off. But he, when the police saw him, yo, he had a, he still had the noose around his neck because he want look, hey, look, this look. is this is why this happened. And yeah. I could be wrong about well, everything. You know, I could be uh, wrong. once once the whole you know more information came out, uh, you know, and we do a flashback every day, and uh, I got to thinking about this whole situation you know, about the whole gay Tupac thing. So we put out this clip because I'd interviewed Mo Prem Shakur, mm-hmm. who was a yeah. Tupac stepbrother. Yeah, yeah. And, and I titled the clip, and I said, unlike, quote, unquote, gay Tupac, Jesse Smollett, the real Tupac actually did get beat up by racists because mm-hmm. Tupac actually got beat up by racist uh, white cops. 
Mm, yeah. And, uh, you know, me and Mo Prem actually talked about that yeah. whole situation. Mo Prem was the one that took the pictures of Tupac with his face. Now, that's someone who really got fucked up. Right. His whole eye was almost closed and there yeah. was bruises and, and serious cuts. Yeah. Jesse I remember seemed like, that. Yeah, Jesse seemed like he was okay, man. I'm telling you, was, I think that it was self-inflicted. It's <laughs> not self-inflicted. It was, it, was, me. <laughs> it was through whoever he was messing around with made Maybe. these marks on him. He Maybe. need to just tell the truth and be like, man, I'm I was sorry. fucking around. I'm sorry. Because he couldn't go film like that and he couldn't go around his boyfriend like that. He needs to just be honest. Because that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah. Other than that, I, I, I don't know. And it wasn't money. It wasn't money. He was getting money. He, he, he got twenty thousand an episode. No, he wasn't. Was more than that? Yes, he was getting more money. Do you know how much? No, I don't know how much, but I think it was over a hundred. Really? I, he I wasn't a star. We, we I actually know he was a star. He was a star. That show. Taraji P Henson, Terrence and Taraji, and Terrence. they run the show. Dude was like co-star, but a lot of them, a lot of that couldn't happen without him. We actually put up an you article know what I mean? based on a, a Fox Twenty Nine report. Taraji and Terrence were getting 175000 per episode. Uh, Jesse Smollett was getting 20000 Oh, okay. Which is a bad, but it's not rich. You know, I don't, me personally, I don't think that that's true. Okay. But maybe. But I just don't see him. Because first of all, you got to get scale your first time around when it comes to you being an actor and you going, mm -hmm. you being on the network television. Your first time around going scale is more than that. So mm -hmm. therefore, I don't see him getting 20 and you doing all this stuff that other people can't do. You're not only acting, you singing, you dancing, you writing songs, yep. you kissing men, <laughs> you doing all this shit that a lot of people can't do. Right. <laughs> For 20 this bands? True. For this 20 true. bands? Right. No, he not getting 20 bands. I don't care what that say. It don't make sense to me. But if that's true, then fine. But yo, I don't see, he is unreplaceable. They can't kill him off that show. I don't think so. And if they do, they lose the, the gay relationship part. Unless they bring in some other guys that's going to sing, dance, kiss, and do all that <laughs> like he do. You spoke about the Gucci boycott. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly enough, can we, can we get the camera? <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we get on the shoes real quick? Can we get on the shoes? You were wearing some Gucci, some Gucci sneakers right now. <laughs> I feel like you did it on purpose because you probably knew I was going to ask about this. No, you know what? I did not. I love these shoes. And I had these shoes before the boycott. I posted it. I posted these shoes before the boycott because they brand new and they look old as shit and they look so shitty. And so I was just showing people how Gucci was selling these shoes that's really shitty that I like because I don't have just dirty shoes like that. Mm -hmm. But to have some, it keeps me from being as... I don't have to tiptoe around this motherfucker like that. I could just do whatever I want. I can kick in these. I can... A car can roll over these motherfuckers and they still sweet. But I still wear my Gucci stuff that I had previously. I have not bought anything new yet. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm I haven't bought anything new, but I'm going to wear what I have already. I'm not gonna stop wearing what I what I what I have already. Yeah, I mean I was just in New York and uh, you know, I have an apartment out there. And all my beanies were uh, Gucci beanies. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to like the corner store and buy like a shitty beanie yeah. <laughs> to wear around my hip hop friends. Yeah. <laughs> so they wouldn't give me a hard time. That's what, I had to go in my closet and get like all my regular jean jackets. Right, that exactly. Didn't, yeah. didn't have jeans on it. Or exactly. Nothing. But I, I, I had to do that for a while. But then I'm like, you know what? It's, it is what it is, man. Well, I mean, you spoke about it and you said, yeah. uh, I don't even think that people believe much in what they're protesting. They just need something to bitch about. I like to throw things on, uh, in my set just to see uh, who they really are. You'd be surprised. Well, number one, what do you think about the whole Gucci blackface thing? Well, I think, first of all, these companies are overseas. They don't understand what we went through and what we go through like that. Our, our situation that goes on in America 
they don't really know about and they're not invested in it like yeah. that. Did they have slavery in, in Italy? I don't think they I did. I don't think they did. I don't think they did. And if they did, I'm not sure. I, maybe they did. Well, I don't the know. Roman Empire had slaves. The Roman <laughs> Empire and all that shit. Yeah, they was doing all that kind of shit, but just grabbing motherfuckers from Africa, bringing them over there to build their country up. I don't know nothing about that. I'm not sure. But what I do know is racism over there. It's racism over there, but it ain't like America racism. It's different, yeah. When ain't you, no yeah. racism like America yeah, no, when racism. You go, when you go to Europe, you realize how there is a, like a lack of, of the base level racism yes. you just experience day yes. to day in America. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So I feel like these companies don't really understand everything that we went through. So they just put together whatever the whatever the fuck they put together. And there there aren't any black people over there to tell them yes and no. So therefore they just do what they do. I don't I honestly don't think that it's malice like that, but they put it together. And then they go, oh, I'm sorry. And then they make a difference. Like Gucci, like Dapper Dan, he he talked to Gucci and they came and talked yeah, to him the, in Harlem. Yeah, the CEO. Yeah, CEO. And, 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 and they're doing diversity projects. They're hiring blacks all around the world now mm. and they're making a the difference. So... After hearing that, I was like, all right, I'm gonna pull my, I'm gonna pull out my Gucci stuff. Slowly but surely, but I'm gonna pull it out. But I have another theory on that, which is I think sometimes I think these companies do that shit on purpose. There you go. They're trolling. They do that shit on purpose because, well, here, here it is. I think sometimes they do it on purpose in order to keep the value of their company together because they probably feel like if too many black people buy their shit, it devalues it. Just like, remember when Tommy Hilfinger was like, I didn't make my clothes for black people? We know something. That was a rumor. I, I think, a rumor, but I remember hearing that. And Timberland, I remember Timberland said that a long time ago too. So what they do is, because there is not a coincidence to me that Burberry, that Katy Perry, Gucci, uh, 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 what was the other one? H and M. H and M. They're not doing all this within the same year. Within the same year, they're not doing. Yeah. That's not coincidence. Yeah. I feel as though they go. You know what? We're gonna let this slide and see what happened, or we're gonna put that out there. Keep the black dollar, and the black dollar is huge. I get what you're saying. Like, no, they gonna want the money, but nah, they gonna probably they they'll be like, yo, we want to be around, so we want like white people to keep this like like really really pristine and not have no black people buy this and devalue. I think they think that sometimes. Well, I mean... But the black dollar is huge. Yeah, and, and, it's and, huge. Yeah. And, and, I mean, the thing about black fashion that, that I've always noticed was that the black community, community will embrace a certain brand mm -hmm. and rock it to death. And then be done and then it. And then it'll just be played out. Yes. Were, you know what I mean? At right. one point, you couldn't wear FUBU anymore. You couldn't yeah. wear Carl Kanai. Exactly. You couldn't wear Cross Colors. Exactly. Why? I and, mean, these are black-owned <clears throat> brands. Yes. And I've, I've interviewed all these guys personally. Shit, let's go back to, I'm from Chicago. Let's go back to Willie Wear, uh, mm. U Man, all this, oh, like in the 80s type joints. Like, these are black designer Willie Wear. Like, these are yeah. premium designers. But like you say, we wear that shit to death, and then we're done with it. They were done, and, and I think brands are a little scared of that. And that's what, and that's what because, I because mean. because that's ultimately I, mean. I think a lot of the world looks at the black community as tastemakers and trendsetters yeah. as to okay, what's hot and what's all not. these rappers and yeah. you know all these you know celebrities and right. actors are wearing Gucci. Oh, okay, I'm gonna wear Gucci. I'm right. gonna wear I'm gonna wear them you know Balenciaga sock shoes. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do all this other shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're not wearing it anymore. Well, right. I guess I, I'm gonna stop wearing it too. You see it all the time, but right. you know when you talk about the true religion, true religion, yeah, true religion was you couldn't go nowhere without rocking true religion. And this is a recent, right. this is a recent now they're brand. bankrupt. Bankrupt. Did they file for bankruptcy? They're bankrupt now, <laughs> and that's what I mean by these companies are like. You know what? We don't want the black dollar to overtake our company and then we become nothing and then they don't be cool so you know what let's throw this let's throw this let's throw this jigaboo out there let's throw this out there so people are like oh yeah we ain't buying that no more and they go great great now we can even the fuck back out 
<laughs> and, and I can be I can be crazy, but I I believe that it is that as well. It's it's what I said before, and I think it's this too. Think about this. I think I think Willie D said this on his Instagram. Notice how all these companies, all these high end fashion brands, they're only really trolling the black community. Yeah. You don't see like a sweater with like slanty eyes. No. You know, where no. Asian people get all offended. You don't see like a swastika, don't. you know, or a Jewish star, like don't. fucked up looking type thing. They're not fucking with these other groups that might actually do some serious damage. Like, okay, now we're gonna really right. fucking we're gonna we're gonna stop our factories will stop printing your shit. How's that? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's a reason for that. And I honestly think for them to all do that within a year. Yeah. This yeah. wasn't even spread it out, yo. This was in a year, almost within the few the same month, a lot of that shit. And and you mean to tell me that this was all a coincidence? Fuck no. Nah. Well, nah. I think a lot of these companies realize, like, okay, it's going to be a big uproar. We're going to get a lot of publicity. Yeah. And then we'll do an apology. We'll do some diversity training. We'll, we'll have a token black guy that works with us say say it's okay. A month later, like, who's still boycotting uh, Starbucks? Nobody. Nobody. Seriously. Nobody. You... you completely forgotten about you that. forgot all about starbucks it was a big deal when it was happening it was a big deal and everybody they, was protesting yeah and... they shut down all the stores across america for an entire day yeah and we're talking about thousands and thousands of, right. of locations and, and and by them doing that show their apology their appreciation right. for the black dollar and all of that and then everybody got cool again but there were some black people who fell back off of, off of Starbucks for a minute, and then they gradually came back on. But that goes with everything. They have to throw these. They have to throw these 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 fillers that we they, we got to yeah. throw. We got to hit you. We got to yeah. we got to get you off us for a little bit because we're a little too hot, and, and, and we don't want to die down. So we got to hit you with this in order for for it to calm down, and then we can we can keep selling the way that we were. Me and TK Kirkland, we had a conversation about this recently. He said the coldest shit. He said, you know, and no disrespect because you white. Am I right, Vlad? Yep. Okay. See, white people want to put blackface on everything except Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read that online. I, read some, I, I saw a meme that said that. <laughs> that. That was our interview. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was it. That was mine. They want to put blackface on everything but Jesus. Then Jesus, I, Jesus is black. That's Jesus what, is actually black. Yeah, skin of bronze, hair of wool. Say it in the Bible, right? Yeah, I don't know no white folks with no. no well, there were just no white people in that area. Period. Yeah, I've been to Jerusalem. Yeah, it's yeah. Too damn hot. Yes, <laughs> you yeah, can't. Absolutely. I was getting sunburned. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was trying to hang out there too long. Well, no sun, when no sun, was this a sunburn Jesus? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, man. So you're wearing Gucci again, basically. Yo, like I said, I'm wearing what I have. Like, I'm not going to, like, stop wearing what I have. But me personally, I I personally had a problem with myself buying too much of it. And I needed a way out. I did. I, I prayed to God. I said, Lord, I'm buying too much Gucci. And then it hit, like, bam. I was like, thank you, Jesus. But God made it where you, I couldn't even wear what I had, too. So I was like, whoa, hey, hey. Lord, I ain't want you to do all that, but yeah, I had to. I, I had to. Uh, now, now I just, you know, I, I'm gradually wearing the stuff that I already have. Well, I had uh, Michael Jai White on here recently, mm -hmm. and he's been an actor now for like what, 30, yeah, 30 yeah, years. Yeah, so that's my man. We did a movie together. Oh, really? Which one? Yeah, it's this movie called Head Shop. It should be coming out this year, next year. Yeah, we Head just did Shop. Head Shop. Head shop. Yeah, it's okay. about a psychiatrist that move into this neighborhood and oh. help everybody on the block okay. with their problems and stuff. He actually, I don't know if he got in trouble for this or not, but he revealed that he's starring in Undercover Brother 2 that's coming out. Really? Yeah, Eddie Griffin's not in it anymore. <laughs> So he's, 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 the, he's the undercover brother. Oh yeah. shit! Which makes sense after Black Dynamite and, and everything else like that. I, I can see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Transition. I, I can see that. Well, he Eddie said, was just Eddie was just dope. No, no, you but, dope. But I, I've been interviewed Eddie get, before. Yeah, yeah no, he's yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah. He said something interesting. He said that in general, black actors' careers, 
never elevate after winning an Oscar. It's the truth. It's just the truth. I, I started thinking the, the, about here's it. The, here's the, the, until now, I think right now we happen to be in the midst of the only Oscar winner or nominee that has, who's, who's black, black Oscar winner or nominee whose career is actually stepping up for the first time and who is, is that? Mahershala Ali. Ali, yeah. Is the first time. You look at, you know, the Moniques of the world, you look at all these actors who, you know, you could even, you know, he even compared it to like, uh, like a Denzel. Mm -hmm. He was already on trajectory. Yeah, absolutely. The Oscar came, yeah. didn't really change that trajectory at all. Right. Yeah, because he was already popular. Right. It's like when he got his Oscar, it was almost like they owed him that. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's still rocking, rocking without right. it, you know. Do you agree or disagree? I think that there is a problem. There is a problem that goes on. But I don't know what it is. Like I said, I'm I'm very big on this two sides to every story. Okay. You know, I don't know if it's the fact that maybe some actors are going after I win this Oscar, I need 79 million a movie now and ain't nobody coming at you but you going yo i'm sticking to my word and i ain't moving until i get 79 million million a movie so that could that could be the situation okay you know what i'm saying where you feel as though that you're bigger than what you think you really are you know but right. i i like that samuel L. jackson mentality i'm gonna I'm make movies forever right. like because i don't care about the money money gonna come yeah you know? i mean because for example like jamie fox he got that Oscar for Ray, mm -hmm. but ever since Ray, his roles have just been kind of just regular roles. Like, you know what I mean? He was not yeah. getting Oscar caliber. He hasn't been nominated since. Yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. But and, and that's not just on the actors, the type of projects that are being presented to you. But see, you got to understand what make you is what break you. You know, you do a movie that's low budget without no money, and that's an Oscar winning movie. But then you go do... Uh, sci-fi big budget movie that ain't no oscar winning movie that's just you getting your brand but you won this oscar and you think you 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 should be getting all this money now you refuse to do a low budget movie again which mm. is what made you so i i feel as though there's a balance that you need to do and i ain't talking about jamie i'm just talking about overall people you know jamie jamie's jamie jamie yeah. is one of the most talented guys i've ever seen in my I life agree. i still watch the jamie fox show and laugh as if i've never seen him before but i'm saying that as far as like the choices that he make with his movies or whatever that's just him and that's how he get down or whatever but i think that if you're going to charge 25 million a movie you got money so come back down here and do a nice little low budget film that you know is going that is written fantastic that's going to get you that buzz. Eddie Murphy did Dream Girls and didn't get nothing but a nomination. Oh, you got nominated for an Oscar? Yeah, for that? yeah, he got nominated for for Dream Girls for that for no with no pay. So you have to come and do these. You know, I'm quite sure when Mahershala did Green Book, Green Book didn't look like it was. This blockbuster movie, Did you no, see it? no, I didn't see it. Didn't see it. But it don't look like it was a blockbuster movie. They ain't promote it like let, that. Let me put it like this: I didn't even heard it. when it won the Oscar. I never even heard of that. Movie. Oh yeah, I heard about it. I heard about it. And I heard it was fantastic, yeah. but it wasn't posted everywhere in the world. That's what I mean. Like they look at him like he just getting Oscar. After. I know he's doing it correctly to me. You go do your sci-fi. Yeah. Big budget, no, and then you come back and you do your low budget yeah, movie I mean, for for your for your Oscar yeah, brand. Moonlight looked pretty low budget. Yeah, it was low budget. It was low budget. Yeah. But this is what I'm telling you: you do these low budget movies because they're written so well and they're so and they're, and and they're so great that you need to go do a, you do a big budget to get your payday on, and then you come back down here for the love of the craft and you do that. But you need to do both. You can't go. I want an Oscar and I got all kind of money, so therefore. Every role that come to me has to be up here. No, you got to come back down here in order to do something real that touch the people. Do you have uh, Emmys? No, I've been nominated. I've been nominated one, two, three, three times. I'm nominated twice for writing and nominated once for acting. Oh, I'm nominated, oh, yeah, writing. cast, yeah, cast. 
a, a ensemble cast for uh, Blackish. Okay, and, so you're uh, right there. You... Yeah, and I've been nominated for writing twice with Conan. I had two. Okay. I got two uh, Emmy nominations for that. Do Emmys make a difference in in a career? It makes it. Di- yeah, I think I think it it makes a difference for a minute. You know, like like at that moment, you like, oh my god, and whatever you can parlay out of it at that moment, <laughs> you better parlay it because. Yeah. Uh, uh, two weeks later, <laughs> ain't nobody gonna be like on you like that. You got to remind motherfuckers that you got an Emmy. You know what I mean? You Just walk be around like, with it. You got to be like, hey, at the restaurant. hey, Dion Cole, <laughs> Emmy nominated writer. You you remember that, right? Like you, <laughs> you got to put that in your title and shit. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, it makes a it makes a difference. You should you should do it with, without that in mind. Mm-hmm. But when it comes, I think it. I think you. And if you parlay it right, yeah, it can. It can make a difference. You know what I mean? You know, speaking of doing stuff for money, have you seen the? Have you seen this uh, Steve Harvey clip that surfaced not too long ago? Which one? I'll play it for you. For four million, I'll be all I the motherfucking this. monkey you can stand. I actually seen this. I, black people are oh, really? so embarrassed yeah, I seen him by do my this motherfucking joke performance. Oh, so he you be did it a there bunch of times. Look yeah. at this thick yeah. lip, son of a bitch. You ain't got to act like that much of a motherfucking monkey. Oh yeah, I remember that. But that's old. And then he was just making a joke about shit, the money that they pay. If they pay him 20 million, he'll be the best monkey on this planet earth and he'll do this and do that or whatever. He said 4 million. For four million, which he's yeah. gotten way more than. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, then. it's an old, 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 old joke. Like it's an old joke, and back then, it was hilarious. And now, and now they pulled up some shit. Now they're trying to make a big deal. That's another era we're living in. People will not allow people to grow with the times, mm. and it is so fucking sad. They would not allow no one to grow with the fucking times. You want to keep going back in time, looking at what motherfuckers did, and then trying to make sure that, yo, that this is the kind of person that they are. No. Well, remember Kevin Hart with the whole Oscars thing. They pulled out a five-year-old tweet. I wish to God Kevin would have hosted the Oscars. I almost almost wanted to reach out to Kev, but Kev don't never answer me, you know? (laughs) On Instagram, <laughs> I, I be hitting him on Instagram. Hey, Kev, good job. Never, nothing. nothing, nothing. So I just was like, fuck it, I ain't gonna reach out or whatever. But I wish Kevin would have hosted the Oscars and brought light to that. He'd have brought, he'd have, he'd have enlightened everyone more if he'd have did that. that. That's just me. I love Kev. That's my dude. Love him to death. But I wish he would have did that. But for you to go back in time and, and search through this man's tweets and all this to look for something and then try to charge him on that shit. That shit is fucked up. You got you got to allow people to grow at the times. So whatever was happening then, that's what was happening then. Everybody said gay, the word gay back then. Everybody was like, look at that gay ass sweater and them gay ass shoes. Gay people were saying that. Well, you know what I'm saying? I but mean, that was then until you found out you was hurting people's feelings and right. then you was like, you know what? All right, well, I'm not going I'm not going to say that no more. But once you realize that, then you go, oh, okay, I'm not gonna do that. You just you you grow with the times. Remember in the airport? I mean, remember remember before the 9-11, you used to be like, nigga, you the bomb, man. That shit was the bomb. You can't go in the airport and say that shit now. You can't be like, yo, it's yo, 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 this food over here, this shit the bomb. You can't say that now because of the Yeah, they gonna what fail. They gonna lock your ass up, but it's because of the times. Something happened to make you go, hey, you can't say this. And then you go, oh, okay, we can't say that. Are you supposed to take away from what you did before? No, that was the time and that was the saying. And what people need to do is look at the time it was then and then go, yo, people aren't doing that no more. So therefore allow people to grow with the times. And and they're not doing that, man, and it's sad. I mean. Imagine Eddie Murphy putting out Raw or Delirious today. Oh my God! It, it, it'd be banned. It'd be muted. It'd be yes. protested. Yes. You couldn't. You couldn't do. You couldn't do Raw or Delirious today. And those are considered the two greatest stand-ups of all, of all time. time. Of all time. Of all time. And you and you and you can't. I, do I will that. take those over any Kevin Hart stand-up. Sam Kennison. God damn it! Like yo, it was great motherfuckers who had great material but that was the time gay people was laughing at that shit at the time you get what i'm saying you act like you act like you wasn't there and shit you knew everybody was fucking there we were there 
Like that was the time. And then something happened and everybody was like, oh, we can't say that no more. Okay. Well, yo, let's move on. Let's let's do some other shit. But you but you don't even honor, they never honor how you changed. That's a good point. They never honor how you are now, how how long you've went without saying these words. Don't nobody give you no fucking trophy for that shit. They only want to look at what you've done before. Do you know how long Kevin went without saying anything like that? Because he, he changed. Mm. And everybody should change. Good point. You get what I'm saying? It's a good point. So, so, so it's bullshit to me. Now you're from Chicago. All day. Oh shit. <laughs> you know where this is going. Oh shit. Do you know R. Kelly? Yes. You know him personally? Mm-hmm. How well? His birthday is the day before mine. We threw parties, not me and him together. Me and Damon Williams, another comedian out of Chicago, our birthday is the same day. It's a real, it's a comedian named George Wilborn, Adele Givens, a guy named Shay Shay, James Gehanna. I mean, Jane, I mean uh, Damon Williams, a guy named Tony Schofield. All our birthdays are like a week apart. Okay. And we're all comedians. So in Chicago, we threw a party every year and we would throw these parties and everybody would come out and it would be great. Kels used to throw a party too. He would throw a party before our party would be. So he'll have his party and we'll go hang out his party and then like I think a couple times he came to our party and then just being around Chicago like we got the uh, the uh, the uh, chosen few picnic that we have every year where we uh, have disco in the park in Chicago. I'm a big disco head like a lot of Chicago cats are. And, you know, he'll come out there. He even made some disco albums. He made some house music albums, too. Hmm. You know, and so he'll come out there, hey, and say what's up to the people. And I will see him, and we would hang out backstage and just okay. be be cool for, you know, for a minute. But, like, sitting down with Kels, having long, extensive conversations and shit, like, we, we never did that. Well, what do you think about his current situation? I think it's fucked up. All the way around the board, like all the way around the board. There's no good in this shit whatsoever. And I think that, because I'm cool with his wife too. Oh, like, you know Dre? Dre is good people, real good people. I have this I have this hair tool that I created called Easy Scratch. And it's like this tool where you just, it's a real compact thing you scratch your hair with. Dre did a couple commercials for me and shit. She, hmm. you know, she, she supported. It's, uh, 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 and everything and so um, she's always been a good friend always supportive everything or whatever you know we never talked about him never talked about him it was just always good fun and shit like that I used to always make fun of her cause I used to be like damn boy that must be some good ass boy to have a motherfucker make a song about you like <laughs> which uh, which song did he make about shit, you yeah I think your body's calling uh, it's a few songs like that are, that she, you know, inspired him to write or whatever. And so I used to always make fun of her that, about that, you know, like, damn, like, when a woman's fed up, you know, all these songs is like inspired, you know, by her. And and, and I used to be like, damn, I want a song made. Shit, I need to, <laughs> I need to put in some more work around this man. Like, so I can get me a song made about me. But, you know, she good people. And, uh, you know, I, being from Chicago, it hurts to see someone that came up in this golden era in Chicago. It was a golden era in Chicago where we all came up together, where it was nothing but motherfuckers working on a craft and trying to be fucking great and take over the world. There was a moment in Chicago in the 90s, and I promise you, it was open mics everywhere, and it would be the brat, and it would be Common, and it would be Twister, and it'd be doing die, psycho drama. It'd be mm. R. Kelly. It'd be public announcement. Mm. It'd be all these. It'd be Danny Boy from uh from uh, from, from Death Row. Death Row. Yeah. Like it would be like everybody just running around the city performing. <laughs> it was great. Bernie Mac, like uh, everybody in Chicago, like not traveling nowhere. We would just be there performing. So to see him blow up and just man take it to a whole nother level that. That shit was inspiring and and making great music and we grew up on dude. We oh yeah. We 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 embrace dude. So to see what's happening now and you remembering these golden days back in Chicago, it's just 
it's so hurtful. It's just like, damn. And I keep hearing all kind of fucked up shit. I mean, fucking situations where they're like, you know, the girls, and I ain't taking away from nothing these women said at all. Like, I, man, like wherever, like I'm glad they got their stories out and all that, you know what I'm saying? But they saying that these women were paid from the, 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 the documentary as well as Kales was paying them too, and they was getting money from both sides, and it's all kind of rumors out right well, now. And I don't, I don't know what's true. Well, I mean, I could tell you an actual situation because I just interviewed Lisa Van Allen. She was uh, a girl who had dealt with R. Kelly for a few years, and uh, she met him at the Home Alone video shoot when she was seventeen, and uh, you know she was messing with him for a few years. Uh, you know, she detailed in our interview how, you know, they used to, he used to tape their sexual encounters and their threesomes and stuff like that. She stole one of the tapes. At one point, he finds out that you took that tape. Yeah, he did. He found yeah. out. And, and how did that go? That was in 2007. Yeah, he found out about it. And um, he actually asked me to come to Chicago. And I, I came to Chicago. We talked about it. He asked me, did I think I could get possession of it? And I told him I did. And I actually um, spoke with Keith and got him to come to Chicago with the tape. Okay. So I guess Kelly's lawyers said that you try to get $300,000 for that tape. Yeah, no. We didn't try to get any, anything for anything. Okay, no, so he actually, no, no, he gave, he did give them money for the tape, but he gave them, it was his idea. He said, I will give you 250,000 for the tape. And that's coming out of her mouth. Damn. So, like I said, I'm not knocking anything that anybody did. I think this shit is horrific. All the way around the board, everything that he's done, all the stories, and I, and I keep saying he done, everything that you hear about is all fuck. It's all a hot ass fucking mess, man. Well, have you ever seen the tape? Yeah, yeah. We all saw it. Yeah, it, it was in the hood. My like, boy got arrested. Well, not my boy. A, a dude I know. One of his boys got arrested for having that in his car and got ch- got charged with child pornography. Well, but there was a court case that actually didn't. You know, he beat that court case, so technically it's not child pornography. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but he he got busted. That, that that tape when my guy's friend got arrested and they saw that R. Kelly because it was a VHS tape. Yeah, I remember. All over the city when they seen that, they arrested. They arrested. Him. Did he actually get convicted of, of child? I don't remember. I don't yeah, remember. they probably just threw it out. They probably had. Yeah, no, they but arrested. I remember. I, I saw the tape and it was really to see if it was R. Kelly. It wasn't to see some young girl. Mm-hmm. It was like, let me just see if there's R. Kelly, and it's like, oh shit, that is our motherfucking Kelly. Yeah, like, yeah we all seen that tape. We all seen it. And, um, you know, this girl, Lisa Van Allen, actually had a threesome with that same girl, Sparkle's niece. And it was filmed. Really? He would just film everything. Yeah. Who the hell films illegal activities? Yo, I died. This I, is like stunting for the gram before the gram. Dude. You know this, what I mean? But it's got to be something. It's got to be something else going on, man, mentally, man, that, that like, you can't have a whole bunch of yes men around you, man. The motherfuckers ain't like helping you out and shit. You know what I mean? Like helping you out with your situations because I'm quite sure he wasn't doing all this shit by himself, man. You know, and and, and, and allegedly doing all this shit by himself. You know. I mean, money money will make bring out the worst in people. It does. It really does. It, it does. really does. And anyone will turn a blind eye. Have you talked to anybody that? That think highly of him? Boosie. Boosie does? Yeah. Boosie doesn't believe any of this shit. Yeah. He believes that, you know, he's he's around all these entertainers and he said, they don't have to take no pussy from nobody. These women are throwing themselves. <laughs> you know, Chris Brown and R. Kelly and all them. Right. He doesn't believe any of it. You know. I just think is I think is I think what what makes this shit even cloudy is that there's truth and then there's lies. Well, here's and my I take. think that that's what's making all this cloudy. And you'll never really know the real truth in, about any of this shit. Here's my take. And this is, like I've interviewed Public Announcement. I've, I've interviewed Lisa Van Allen. Um, I'm sure I'll interview some more people along the way. 
from both sides. And the one conclusion that I have come up with, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that when you look at all these situations, all these situations, everyone's dirty on both sides. And that's what I was saying. Everyone's dirty. R. Kelly doing saying. dirty shit, and the people that are accusing him are dirty themselves. That's no one's really a victim. And that's what song, I'm saying. I'm thing. saying that it's, 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 it's truth and it's lies right. all together. I'll tell you an interesting story. This was in our in my interview with Public Announcement. Public Announcement originally were three members, mm-hmm. right? There was a, I interviewed two of them. Mm-hmm. There's a third member named Earl. And Earl left because he told the other two guys that he had seen R. Kelly having sex with Aaliyah. So he quit the group, mm-hmm. right? They asked R. Kelly about it. He didn't deny it. <laughs> he said, what's that got to do with him? Right, right, they just right. kept it pushing, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, "Well, how did you guys react when you heard this?" He goes, "Well, we didn't completely believe him, and here's why. What a lot of people don't know was that Earl's wife was Sparkle. After Earl quit the group, after seeing R. Kelly, you know." having sex with a 15 year old he then came back and to the other public announcement guy said hey my wife got this demo I want you to give it to R. Kelly they said you sure you want us to do this okay they brought it to R. Kelly R. Kelly said yeah I love it but if he wants me to produce this I just want to produce it by myself she's going to have to stay in the studio you know, sleep on the couch work day and night until we get this album together and they, they came back and told him that. They said, listen, listen, R. Kelly will produce your wife, but we're going to tell you she's not going to come back. He said, no, nah, no, nah, I'll be fine. She never came back. Wow. And the question is now, after allegedly seeing R. Kelly having sex with a 15-year-old, what man would bring his wife back to that same guy and leave him alone with her for weeks? You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's so... It's so dirty all around. It's, it's dirty all the way around. All around. You cannot come to a, a sound conclusion on this. You and can't. and I get it and I understand that. Yeah. I understand these stories that these women are telling and I get that. I get I get all of that. I get it and I sympathize with them so much. I truly do. But the word on the street is that a lot of these people are trying to everybody's trying to get paid and they have got paid. You yeah, know, that's they, why he's broke. That's he, why he's broke. He's been paying people he a quarter million. Them. They got money from the network, the people who did the documentary. He paid them, like, and everybody's just like, yo. So, but but at the same token, I don't think everybody's lying about this. He he, he uh, if if it sound like a duck and it walk like a duck, it's a goddamn yeah, duck. I think R. Kelly's a pedophile. So if you, yeah, if you out here fucking around with young girls, why are you even with young girls? Like yeah. my thing is, what? Well, if you if you got beat off a case or some shit like that, why are you still even hanging in the vicinity of fucking young girls? I wouldn't be nowhere around no young. I, Man, I would be with motherfucking women that so motherfucking old. Be the Jack, retirement home. What? <laughs> Put oh. your teeth back in, girl. Oh. <laughs> Every bitch I fuck with would have an ointment drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Every woman I fuck with would have an ointment drawer, goddammit. Like, old as hell. Like, get that. Well, and then there so, is. So it's just, it yeah. just it's, it's like, it's like, why do you keep. It makes yourself like, why do you keep doing that? And and I get it. Like some, I heard this story too. I heard that, you know, a lot of older men like younger women. That's just what it is. Like that's just a preference. Like some men well, like light skinned women. Some women like dark skinned well, women. Some like younger. Nothing, but my yeah. thing is, why are they so young? Underage. Yeah, I don't. Or, think or anything- close to close to legal age. Why? Why would you? What do you even have in common with a legal age person? You know what I'm saying? And 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 maybe maybe you do have something in common with them. I don't know. I'm just talking about if I was on a case. I would, well, I, I remember uh, Nick Cannon 
says something interesting because Nick worked with R. Kelly, you know, Gigolo and stuff like that, those songs. His first album, actually, I think, was mostly done by R. Kelly. And he said... R. Kelly is special. R. Kelly is... There's well, genius well, R, there. R, R, R. Kelly can't read. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we're just going to go... And he's admitted it. Yeah. Like, on the yeah. I Admit song. On the I Admit, so, right. So, but, and I've been in the... I've, I've been in the studio with both of them, and what R. Right, Kelly yeah, he did Gigolo. Yeah, yeah. What R. R. Kelly produced like half my first album. Oh, okay. But like what R. Kelly can do in a studio is genius. Like I've watched my man maneuver and make a hit record in less than 15 minutes. Mm. But that, but he, the way he, his social skills are poor. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like we see that. Like I get, I see why that man is attracted to a younger girl because he's there that they talk Mentally? to yeah they they're on the same level oh <laughs> like no sophisticated I've, I've grown, never yeah. i've never actually looked at it like what that. grown-ass woman <laughs> other than once you get over the fact that this man is a great singer and performer what's your conversation going to be about you can't read he said in that in that new interview with gail king that he went into a bank for the first time ever two weeks ago yeah, and he's like that. 52. i saw that I saw that. And you've made hundreds of millions of dollars along the way. Like, you walk into a bank for the first time ever? Yeah, I saw that. Fuck wrong with you. What Nick Cannon said, is that just blew my mind a little bit. Think about that. That's not, that, that blew You're my You're illiterate. Mind. Yeah. An educated woman with a college degree doesn't have a whole lot in common with you. I get that. That can add to the problem. It still doesn't, doesn't, make, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't justify doesn't shit. Doesn't justify <laughs> shit, but still at the same token, I get it. Yeah. I get all this shit. Same thing with Michael Jackson. Like I, 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 I was like to say I, that. Yeah, like with with Mike. Like Mike never had a childhood and all that shit. And I just think I think that him hanging out with these other little kids put him in a certain place mentally. Like that he felt comfortable with them to do the shit that little boys fucking do and i think it was it's, it's it's wrong and it was and it's fucked up and you shouldn't do that but his mentality probably just wasn't there to go that something is wrong like something and something is wrong and yeah. uh, did you see uh like like did you see leaving uh neverland yeah i saw that both parts i saw all of it yeah me too. i saw all of it and, and with I, the, the oprah thing at the end i saw all of it what'd and you think i, I it was it was enlightening. It was, but I just like I said, here we go again with placing blame. Like like I think he shouldn't have never been around just by himself with anybody kid. You should never have your kid just sitting up with a grown ass man. I don't care you have how one. magical this motherfucker you is. You have kids? Yeah, I got how, a kid. How many kids you got? One. One kid. How old? Sixteen. Okay. Is there any sort of situation where you would allow? No, you ain't even gotta finish. The <laughs> now go ahead, finish the question. But go ahead, go ahead. I mean, you know the question. No. Is there any situation no. where you would allow your child? No. To be with a grown a grown ass man. man that you don't no. know, not know, whatever. No. Spend the night. My mind don't even. My mind can't even grasp that. I cannot even go pick up a grown man to come hang out with my kid. They picked him up and brought him back to the, I don't give a fuck how many albums you got. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. If you go hang out with my kid and you in the room with him, it's eventually it's gonna be a moment where I'm gonna be like, boom, 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 boom. Mike, let me talk to you for a second. <laughs> now, why are you like hanging out with my motherfucking kid again? Like, <laughs> Fresh my memory. I, I just, have... I just, no, no. Why, why you ain't with no hoes or nothing? <laughs> like, why you want to be with him? Like, this ain't strange to you. You ain't got no women you want to hang out with. I don't see you with no women. I don't even see you with no men. Like, what, like, what is it about my kid that, like, I would, I would have a conversation with him, like, and, and be like, yo, dude, like, yo, we, we can't keep doing this. I, I, I mean, and there's different sides to it. The one thing that annoys me is this whole he never had a childhood excuse. Because the way I look at it is like, yeah, motherfucker, you didn't have a traditional childhood right? because your dad was helping you to become a fucking superstar and now you're rich as fuck right. doing what you love. right? You know, spending mm -hmm. each day doing whatever the fuck you want, flying right. private, living right. in mansions and whatever right. else. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck cares if you didn't get to go to birthday parties and right. shit as, as a kid? 
Because if your dad didn't do all that shit, you'd be probably working at the GM plant. Exactly. You know, and, hating and, your fucking job. Exactly. But this motherfucker been putting out, not, not since the age of five, hits. Not songs. Hits. It's a different. Hits. Yeah. Number ones. I know a motherfucker named Marcus that's been making music forever. Ain't nobody heard of this nigga at all. <laughs> so we ain't talking songs. <laughs> I keep telling him to get a job, but he would not do it. This nigga still rhyming, still just. <laughs> Yo, got a catalog. He got about, about a good 15 albums. Ain't yeah. nobody heard of this nobody nigga. Nobody heard of him. No, no. Right. So we talking hits. Yeah. Promotion, studio, hits. You get out there and Joe Jackson's like, you go out there and you learn them dance moves, you do this. Only fun you having is in the hotel room. That's all the only fun you ever having is with your brothers. You ain't around nobody else. You ain't around no other women, no other kids. You ain't, you ain't doing none of that shit. So when you get older, you feel like, yo, you know what? I'm going to go back and get something that, that I missed. And I do understand that. And I get what you're saying. You like, you know, that, that ain't no excuse. But yeah. but in that way, you're gonna go, depending on the individual, you're gonna be like, man, I miss not being able to ride a bike, not being able to like have a girlfriend, to play like a kid. That that'll fuck with you in a sense where you like, yo, you know what I mean? I mean, I'll tell you me, before I had any money, when I was younger, I remember I wanted a Mark Buchanan leather. It used to be these three quarter length leathers with the with the fur around the collar, yep. the three quarter joint, butter soft, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what Yeah, butter soft, I ain't had no money to get that. When I did get some money, they was all out of style, my nigga. <laughs> what I go get? <laughs> Niggas was like, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I went and bought a Mark Buchanan because I never had it. Yeah. And I wanted it so bad. You get what I'm saying? So if your mind is like, man, I want a childhood. I want this. I want that. That go with even like, I even, I even look at that with like certain athletes and shit like that. And I ain't trying to get off the subject, but like, if you, if you are like a, unattractive motherfucker and you're told you can't get the most beautiful woman in the world and the most yeah. light skinned pretty woman or whatever the fuck and you want that and you never got it as soon as you get to the league what you getting you getting one and i go with white women whatever the fuck like you're gonna be like yo i want to go get this woman whatever the fuck that you wanted hispanic woman asian woman whatever you gonna go get that motherfucker that you thought about your entire life you're gonna go get that motherfucker because they kept telling you no all that time. So I think it's the same thing when it comes to Mike. I think he felt like I've never had this childhood, I'm gonna go do this. And now I'm doing this childlike things with these kids, but childlike things go all the way around the board. Like child shit be like child shit. You do your first kiss with a girl when you young. Like you, you do these child things that escalate that shouldn't be done. But I'm saying that he's still mentally doing child shit. And that goes sexually as well as toys and all that shit. You get what I'm saying? And I ain't talking about sex toys. I'm talking about just actual <laughs> yeah. real toys. Well, keep this in mind. But I still think it's fucked up. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up. But because even as a child, I wasn't sleeping in the same bed with other boys. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, okay, check this out. You have a sleepover with some motherfucking kids and they come over and y'all play together and hang yeah, out. Yeah, no, I've had sleepovers with my friends. You have sleepovers with your friends and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, okay, I've okay, done so that. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Yes, not, not yes, the same we, bit, we've all though. done that. But, but it's kids, it's kids shit. If you got like two of your cousins, two other friends okay. or whatever, and all y'all in the same right. goddamn bed, yes, you have done that. We all have done that shit. A grown man doing that shit, no, that's fucked up. But his mind. Well, is that of a toddler, I mean, of a young kid. And I still don't justify none of that shit. I'm just trying to think that's what makes sense to me. And, and I think he should have had the right people around him telling him, yo, dude, you can't do this, you can't do that. And there should have been more motherfuckers on him than what it was. But here's the thing about what you just said. And I think that if you're not our age, you don't fully comprehend this. At his height, Michael Jackson was the most famous person on earth since Jesus Christ. Yes. And I do not say this lightly. 
No. You could show me any pope, any president, any movie star, any any musician, yes. any activist, yes. any whatever the fuck, any world leader, any whatever. Michael Jackson was more famous than all of them. Yes. You know how Michael Jordan's really famous these days? Ain't shit compared to Michael Ain't Michael shit. Jackson. Ain't Michael shit. Jackson, Jordan would walk in, no one would even notice Jordan. I honestly don't think that there's been a more famous person since Mike. I'm, and I'm before a, I'm, him, I'm I think it was like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, I think, was Michael. more famous than Mike. Jesus Christ and Michael Jackson. Yeah. Those are the two more, most famous people of the last 2,000 years. I will, I will years. agree with that. I See what I'm saying? So you essentially are looking at a God on earth. I will agree with that. Even the popes, who are supposed to be God on earth, or yeah. the, the connection to God, you know, if you're a Catholic, are not holding a candle to the way people will lose their shit right. with a Michael Jackson Absolutely. around. So who was really going to tell Michael Jackson anything and, and get a respectful reply? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. The rules do not apply. Yeah, it doesn't apply. It does not apply. You have all the money in the world, all the fame in the world. You could buy whatever you want. Oh, the Beatles catalog, I'll just buy that. You know anything in the world? Anything I'm you put want. An amusement park. Amusement park. House. I'm gonna buy a hundred acres and put a amusement there's, park. There's no filter. That's not. Yeah, I want a you. monkey. You can do whatever you want to do. So therefore, and and therefore, that little shit means something to them. I remember a friend of mine who was around Prince one time, and he went to Prince's house, and this guy, this guy used to be super cool with. He went to Prince's house, and Prince walked up to him and was like this, look. And 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 dude looked at the picture and there was a woman with a camera on the picture. And Prince was like, yeah, I got that bitch. And then uh, my boy was like, what you talking about? He was like, she was, she was taking pictures of me. So I took a picture back at that bitch and I got that bitch. And he was like, like, ha ha, ha ha. It's some weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> that made his day, yo. You know what I mean? <laughs> he that made like he showing people like, look. So you get when you when you famous like, right? Yo, it be like that yeah. normal little shit that just like make you that make your day. So I guess Mike felt like, yo, if I get out this house and I go sit at this house and I hang out, then yeah, this is this is normal to me. Well. I said something on my Instagram. I said, after watching Surviving Neverland, here's my take. We'll never know what happened between Michael Jackson and those two boys. But we do know both of them filed lawsuits trying to get millions. Mm -hmm. Once someone comes forward who doesn't want money and details all of Michael Jackson's you know, alleged abuse, then I will believe it a lot more than what I'm hearing now. Because, right. and if you watch that Oprah you know, that talk afterwards. Remember when she asked him, like, well, you know, why did you sue? He goes, well, because I wanted to get the, the attention of the Jackson estate. Right. Well, why are you asking for millions? Well, I wasn't even really thinking about the money. Come on, man. Cut that shit yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cut that shit out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cut that fucking shit out. You were, you were sort of like a hundred million. You're not thinking about the money. Your career ain't doing shit these days. Like, come on, cut it out. Well, let's 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 take it here. I told you again. I am an advocate of two sides to every goddamn story. Mm -hmm. If something happened to you where you were molested, or something happened to you, you were abused, or whatever, when you were younger, and and this tormented you your whole life, and then you finally get to a point where you like, you know what? I'm gonna go after this motherfucker, and you do. Are you is 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 money? Are you gonna think about money? You are. Yeah, you are. Most people do. You are. Unless you're financially at the point where you don't really care. But like, but, but like hey, I'm a, like a Macaulay Culkin. But you but you're not. So therefore, the majority of people would be like, "Yo, I'm going to sue," because that's just the American way. You're going to sue, and that and money's going to come up. So, what makes him any different than anybody else? To go, yo, you know what? I'm going to put up money. I'm going to sue for money because I'm quite sure everybody in his ear was telling him to do that. Ain't nobody going to go, yo, you know what? Let's go, 
get Michael Jackson and put him in jail. Like everybody probably went to him and was like, yo, get you might as well get some money out of it. Not saying that it's right, but I'm yep. just saying that he's only doing what was probably told to him. You know what I mean? And I who who wouldn't have did that? I mean, I think he's trying to get a check. I mean, yeah. Um, and this is what I mean by everyone's just dirty on both sides. Once again. Once, you see what I'm saying? Once again. Like, like once if he again. just wanted, okay, look, I, I'm suing for a hundred dollars. Pay me my hundred dollars and admit that what you did, it will be even. It will be even. No, I want a hundred million. And it got thrown out of court and they're appealing. Yeah. They're both suing. And 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 so what make you is what break you again. Yeah. You went after the money. You added the money into there, and the money is actually what broke what broke the deal. What, what, because what makes people the, the, not, not completely believe you? I, right. I, I don't know what happened. I, I do not know. I do, do know that know. I interviewed this dude named Ronnie Newt. Mm-hmm. He was a gangster out of uh, out of the Bay Area whose kids uh, called the Neutrons were signed to Joe Jackson, and he showed me pictures of him being at Michael Jackson's house. He's wearing the glove. He's hanging out with Michael. Here's bubbles. Yeah. Whatever. And he pulled out a picture. He said, this right here is a picture of my son in his underwear at Michael Jackson's house. They offered me $200,000 to say that Michael Jackson molested my son. Yeah, I said, I'm here to help Michael. Oh, he said, oh, no. We don't, that ain't what we want with you. We heard he, that, that your boy spent nights at the house. We want to know if Michael tampered with him. I just picked him up or touched him in any kind of way. If he did, we got 200000 for you. I said, huh? I had just got out of prison. I said, man, I can't do that. Can't tell no lie like that. I ain't doing that. But there it goes again. Yeah. It's, it's, it's truth and lies. Truth and lies. Truth and lies but, dilute everything, man. But what I honestly feel in this whole situation, like I said, I don't know what happened behind closed doors. But personally, I feel like those two mothers should get the fucking death penalty. Fuck, well, the, fuck from, those two mothers. From the, uh, the Michael Jackson yeah. shit? The fact that they're leaving their son for a week. This is what I'm saying. You have to look at the actions of others. These women, you have to look at what they did. Why are you allowing your son because it's Michael Jackson? Yeah. You allowing a grown man. You you went and picked up a grown man to come sleep at your house with your son repeatedly. repeatedly. You allowed this man to get you a hotel room away from your son on a whole nother floor than your son. Right. On a whole nother hotel than your yeah. son. You repeatedly allowed this yeah. because why? Because you was caught up. You had the limo. You had a jet too. You had right. money. He bought, what about you had house? access. You bought a house. You was getting stuff too. And it made, and it diluted your attention away from what was yeah. important. So therefore, even if all that shit was true, you have to look at, you have to place blame on other people as well. Like, like it's, it's, it's two sides to every fucking story. Everybody need to be held accountable. All this shit can't happen alone. Yeah. Everyone had a part in this. You cannot do everything that's going on. You cannot have done this alone. There's someone else that aided you regardless. I don't give a fuck who you are or what your situation is. In every situation that we discuss right now, there was someone who aided. If yep. it goes, if it deals with R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, there are others who mm-hmm. ate it at the end of the day. Yes, the act was wrong. I get that. But what led to that? How did it get there? You know what I mean? You know, and I, I've, I've always said, because, you know, I, I really push for financial uh, literacy. You know, I have a Instagram page called Vlad Stocks where I talk about different investment strategies and, you know, and stuff like that. And I've always said that you will always make better decisions if you have a financial base. Mm-hmm. When you're living paycheck to paycheck, you will make the worst fucking decisions in yes. your life. Yes, you will. So, and all one, these- and one, and one fucked up move will throw your whole fucking throw shit off. Throw it all off. And this is why I said, like, have a savings. Yeah. Have, have a lot of money put aside. Yes. You know, live under your means so you could have a bag. So, you're not chasing after you know, things that you know you're not supposed to be doing because you're worried about paying your mortgage next yes. month. You're worried about getting your car repoed and stuff yes. like that. When you yes. have a, a financial base, mm-hmm. you will look at a situation and say, yeah, we can hang out, Michael. I didn't leave my son in a closed room, period. Yeah. You know, R. Kelly? Oh, yeah. Who's the last person you put out? Sparkle <laughs> yeah. in the 90s? He hasn't put nobody on. My daughter ain't gonna get shit out of this. 
We gotta go somewhere else with this shit. Right, right. You know, this promise of fame, no. none of these motherfuckers put nobody on. That's no real. one got famous off, off these people. If you have a sound bank account and you have money, you make rational, rational sound decisions. decisions. Yes, you do. And, and and decisions that take thought. And that goes with everything. That even goes with you won't even fight a motherfucker. Right. I got too much <laughs> you, to lose. I got too much to lose. You know what I mean? Like you'll be like, you know, you'll look at a fight differently. Somebody call you a bitch, you'll be like, Yeah, all right, I'll be a bitch. I'm out. You know what I mean? I ain't I'll be about hop to, back to yeah, my Rolls Royce. I'll be my Ben Sprinter and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. A bank, a bank account. Yes, you you having money, you'll make sound decisions. Absolutely, I I, I agree. With you. Shit, my shit be so. I can't even sh- like. If I go shopping and I got a piss, dude, I will. I, I make. I be buying all kind of bullshit. Just, I be I put that on the counter. Hurry up, just go. Take that I get home, it's mediums and shit. <laughs> Bullshit that I shouldn't have even bought. Too rich bought. these days, man. Right, 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 right. <laughs> that old because, spice money, right. you know, changing you. <laughs> because I'm not, because I'm uncomfortable. You know what I mean? And that's all you basically saying. You know, I mean, and about being a, about about having a, a sound bank account. Yep. You know. You know, I think we're at a very interesting time. Like, I have a a theory to this, and you know, this is just my theory. And I felt that historically, there's always going to be a fight for power with just humans, mm-hmm. including men and women. Mm-hmm. You know, when in society, relationships, whatever, there's always a struggle for who has the most power. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that women have always had over men is sex. Mm-hmm. You know, women ultimately decide when that man will have sex. Yeah. But you look at 2019 with social media mm-hmm. and so and the concept of fame being so much more widespread now mm-hmm. that sex for men is much easier to come by than it was 20 yeah, years ago. Absolutely. So you now have an unevening of the power structure mm-hmm. in society. So how are women going to equalize that? Mm-hmm. Well, the Me Too movement is one of those ways. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, now we're going to, okay, you know, having sex with me is not as big of a deal as it was okay, well, now I'm going to be able to sue you and I'm going to yeah. kill you in the court of public opinion and I'm going to destroy your career and I'm going to elevate myself by looking like a victim and so forth. And there are very serious examples of this and there are rapists and there are pedophiles and there are predators and so forth like that. Mm-hmm. But I think that a lot of these cases are just money grabs, you know, are just shakedowns. Yeah, man. You know, people yeah. lose their and it's shows. Not to, it's and not to take away from. Not to take away, but, but you know that a lot of these are are just shakedowns and money grabs. Yeah, I mean, you know? like I said before, man, lies and truth dilute, man. They dilute everything, and so you just don't know what's what, you know. And you have to hear all sides to every situation. You can't just sit back and be like, "This is what it is," because somebody says something. Because that's what's happening. Yeah. Somebody will say something. And all of a sudden, everybody just believe it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that Dwight Howard shit. There was like he was sleeping with a tranny, tranny yeah. and shit. And everybody just went off. Well, Dwight Howard be like, and it's like, yo, yeah. man, you don't know if that's true or not, man. Yeah. And yo, the, somebody asked that man, like, yo, like what, like, like what's yeah. the situation and shit? Well, I, I think, but that, it really ain't even none of your business, right. though. To be honest yeah, with you, wants to fucking tranny, yeah, fucking yeah, tranny. Like, yo, who cares? it's all like, who cares, yeah. man? And, and I think that that a lot of the problem is is that a lot of these people who get accused are very silent mm-hmm. themselves. They don't speak to their lawyer. Yeah. They don't speak at all and so forth. Like, imagine if R. Kelly made his own documentary and said, okay, y'all accuse me of this and that's cool and whatever else, but let me show you, let me show you these people who are accusing me some of their backstories. Let me show you these facts. Here's, here's the girl who extorted me. Mm-hmm. And here's some interviews talking about how she extorted me. Mm-hmm. You know, here is here's, some receipts. here's all these parents mm-hmm. that knew all about my background and still left their little girl with me. Here's some receipts you know what I mean? that I paid them. Here's all the things I've done for these yeah. girls. And my sway, here, sway the way people yeah, think. Yeah, here's all these women who were 30 when I met them mm-hmm. that are now turning against me and whatever else. But here's mm-hmm. all the shit. You know, like, for example, I know you're friends with Drea Kelly, mm-hmm. but there's videos out there 
you know, because she's crying all through the surviving R. Mm. Kelly. But there's videos saying R. Kelly is my best friend, and mm. oh, I loved being Mrs. Kelly and going mm -hmm. into restaurants and, you know, right, and I love right. him so much. He's the mm -hmm. greatest person ever. But then later on, when the child support checks stopped right. coming, he's a monster. He but, when was, but when was that tape? Not that long ago, after their divorce. How's that? After that divorce. Because when, when she was doing that TV show, that Hollywood X, X's, X's. That see, was way just, after the divorce. See, it just, to me, man, it's just when, we, when where were they at? Where, were they on good terms at the time? Were they not? Because people can pull up these videos, man. They can pull all this shit up, man. And they can make these stories up, man. And you just don't know. I just want people to just quit looking at motherfuckers as soon as they hear something, that's what it is. Because we, we, we're in that era too, where it's like, as soon as you hear something, it's like, oh, that's God, that's it. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Yo, 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 yo. He said this, oh, yeah. that's law. No, listen. And it's like, that ain't, it's like, man, you gotta look at all this stuff, man. They just removed the Michael Jackson episode from The Simpsons. They're, they're taking his statues down and you know, everything else like that. Yeah, and it's like, it's like, that's, that's, that, that's not, and I understand that the shit the is fucked up and it's all fucked up. I get that. All Still and all. But like, I just, I'm just, like I said, I'm big on yo. Let's, because in the court of law, you got to do this yeah. and then you got to show this. And Michael Jackson actually won in his criminal case. He sure did. And so therefore it's like, man, you, you have to, you, yeah. we just in the world now, man, where anybody can say anything yep. and just, they put that shit on there, boom, and everybody run with it. And it's yep. like, yo, man, we, we just living in a weird time right now, man, yep. where you just got to be careful and just get the fuck out of everybody way, man, and just chill. What it is, Dion Cole. Always a pleasure, man. Congrats. Thank you, fam. Global ambassador. Yeah. Old Spice. Let me just put that out there again. You know what I mean? Yeah, put that out you, there. Yes, All these. Sir. So when you're, uh, you know, in Europe somewhere, <laughs> watch the commercials. You might see them pop up. You know, congrats. So you're good. on uh, Blackish and Grownish. Blackish and Grownish. Still doing stand up, I assume. Still doing stand up. Any specials coming yeah, up? Yeah, we we'll we shooting a Netflix special this you year. You do a Netflix special? Yeah, I'm okay. Doing a Netflix special. I'm excited about that. Dope. Check out my Easy Scratch at ez-scratch.com yeah. and check me out on Instagram. Yeah, you got some movies coming up also. The hair shop. We got Two Minutes of Fame. Uh, Friends giving a couple, yeah, a lot, a lot of independent movies coming out. Doing man. your thing, man. Yeah, Doing we rocking. Your thing. We rocking. We rocking. That's what it is. Until next time. Yes, sir. Peace. Thanks, bro.